Hello squadders, how are you? It's dreary, it's Sunday and we all know how we feel on a Sunday evening. Oh, we try and eat it. We've got big day, big week next week, uh, but thank you for carving out a bit of time for me. Uh, I really do appreciate it because Poetry is a little bit tricky and that is why we've gathered tonight. So it's lovely to see your faces. Uh, thank you for Be Sure, who's always whooping about an hour before it happens. Are you all right out there? And uh, I know some of you have snacks. Some of you like uh, some Watsits, Harry Bows. Some of you use this not as space to think, actually. You use it as a space to drink. But hey, uh, I'm just pleased you're here. Now, um, if you want to join in and tweet along and be part of the fam, uh, my little home slices, then the hashtag is Sunday Sessions. But we like to mix up the hashtags. You know, some people call it overkill. Hey, I call it, you know, just living the dream. You can have hashtag CPD seekers, hashtag poetry purveyors. Has they're all kicking off. I can't remember half of them. Hashtag time giver uppers, hashtag word warriors. We are just one big love in the club sort of that sort of love. Teacher family looking out for each other, caring and just wholesale love bombing. You know, this job is tough, we're on the edge, but with a bit of care and share, we're gonna make it through. And you know what? <laughs> we're nearly there. I'm counting, I'm counting, I'm counting with you. We love our jobs, but we like to do a bit of countdowning, don't we? Um, I'll tell you what I've noticed out there. This is just nothing to do with teaching. But I suppose because of my whole window to the world is through education. Uh, we've had our trees up early, haven't we? There's been a lot of tree up in this weekend, much sooner than normal. But there's probably nothing else to do, is there? But uh, that's nice to see. And, uh, you know, I've put in my uh, hot favourites for the Christmas movie and in the chat you might want to do that too. Uh, who's looking after the chat? It's Mr C. In a better mood this week so that's good. Here he is. Uh, he's, oh look I found this lovely photo of him smiling. That's nice. Uh, he's always happy to help. Uh, that's rare that is, catching him on camera smiling. You can hit him up with any questions. Uh, Mr C, yeah. do you want to introduce yourself? Have you got a mic on? <laughs> yeah, I'm fuming about the fact that you put me like an idiot. Right. Hello, everybody. Fuming, raging, bit of thesaurus thinking there. Furious, enraged. Yeah, going up the scale there a little bit. Um, anyway, it's poetry tonight, and um, it's it's. Poetry always reminds me a bit of drama. You either love it or hate it. It's, a, it's very kind of Marmite. But I think the thing with poetry is um, once we understand how to navigate it, then we can all enjoy it. And not just enjoy it in its own right, as in reading it, but really give children the stepping stones so they can build their own. That's what we want, that bridge from reading into writing. So um, if you're a little bit, you know, reluctant around the edges with poetry, um, come with me and we'll together unlock some of the very things that will make our poetry teaching a little bit less stress. Stressful, yes. I didn't know what word was. Yeah, let's let's have it a little bit uh, less stressful. Okay, now um, one of the things I think we've really really got to help children with in regards to poetry is um, help them understand that there's almost two very different modes that they move through, uh, whether they are the poetry reader. Do you know, you won't know this, this is off camera, 
Mr C has just sliced over here and taken the bottle of Prosecco. Just, just saying. Um, so yeah, as kids read, um, they need to read poetry in a certain way, which requires an alertness um, and essentially uh, a lot of sensitivity. You know, oh, thank you. <laughs> nice um so we've got to sort that out like it's a different type of reading it's very slow it's very deliberate uh we want to immerse them in it and different poems need to be absorbed in different ways um and children need so much exposure to poems and um and we've all been in the game a long time, well, many of us have, uh, and we remember the gorgeous anthology by Pi Corbett, who gave us a poem a day. These are gifts. These, you know, we need to surround ourselves with poems and we need to read them regularly. Now, um, there are some fabulous uh, poetry anthologies out there and um, I really want to uh, give a little rep for actually um, Carol Ann Duffy's collection of poetry for children because yes she has got the owl and the pussycat in there but she's also got more unusual ones and I think that's probably one of the better anthologies on the market that sense of um, you know children get a real breadth and width of poetry types. Now that's the reading of poetry and we've really got to put it in on the map regularly because it's easy to read stories and we can catch ourselves not reading non-fiction and not reading poems. So we've got to have a little chat with ourselves. You know, when you go in the stock cupboard with Mrs Gibb to have a little chat about something, you also have to have a chat with yourself about putting poetry on the map. Now, the other thing we need to do when we want children to write poems, um, it's subtly different from reading. When they write poems, we want them to um, kind of oh, chisel out the most loaded words, as it were, and in that choosing, in the choosing of rhythms and shapes, um, and actually building patterns, they need a hell of a lot of confidence and we need them to be wildly confident. In fact, we need them to be overconfident with writing poetry because we all know on an adult level, by the time we get to being adults, if we haven't found a way to write poetry, it can be really scary. And it sometimes feels really kind of self-absorbing or a little bit cringy, and we can't take the leap. So we must really nurture that confidence in them to leap out and have a go. So the other thing that's really crucial with poetry, and you've heard me say this before, but I'm gonna say it again, when we write non-fictions, we want to build them uh, using the idea of shapes. Now, when we write poems, uh, we're also going to look very closely at gleaning out shapes, almost like little chunks of jigsaw pieces that are meaning loaded that will guide their writing. And and even though obviously poetry and non-fiction are completely different, we're going to deal with them as the same beast. And a big message with poetry is essentially this, you know, I want you to read poems. I want you to be a pattern finder. I want you to read poems and I want you to be a shape searcher. And in doing that, these shapes and patterns are going to guide your way. And when you mimic and copy a shape, does that mean that poem isn't yours? Of course it's yours. You've laced it with loads of language. Mr. C, have you got any questions? Not a question. A we've, comment. We've got, uh, <clears throat> we've got Hayley in the chat has got COVID-19. Oh, Hayley. Can we just some heartburst love, Oh, Hayley, absolute hashtag 
heart burst to you, Hayley. I hope you're feeling, I know, co I mean, you're not gonna be feeling great, are you? But I'm sending you loads of heartwarming wishes. And um, like, I hope you're sleeping loads and resting. Oh, the, I don't know. She says thanks. Oh, I hope you don't know. Like, we're, that it's okay in a, you can come to a chat with COVID. Well, she Thank did goodness. Okay. She said she's still doing CPD. Oh, she's babe. Oh, still doing CPD. Dedicated. That is hashtag dedicated. And Hayley, um, you know, don't push yourself too much. Be careful. But you're here and, and we welcome you. But like, at arm's length with a kind of a, a stick or something. Anyway, um, this to me, it sums it up. We know um, poets uh, more than any form of writing have to choose, you know, it's almost like it's an art form that we've got to be so careful, doesn't die. You know, we've got to nurture and love poetry. And look at this from Emily Dickinson, uh, you know, in, 1830. Well, she was born then. I oh, know she didn't write that then. Look, that spans her whole life. I don't know my history well enough to know exactly when she wrote this poem, but just please have a little look at this. A word is dead when it is said, some say. I say it just begins to live that day. And this to me is what the business of poetry is all about. You know, words. And, and, you know, the longer I'm on this planet, this seems to be the, the shining sort of beacon of obviousness. That's not very poetic, Mrs. C. Oh, well, um, just have it anyway. But the, why we're here, our quest as teachers is to furnish children with a wealth of words. So much so they acquire them into their own vernacular uh, the more they have, the more the su they succeed, the more they learn. And then, of, of course, it's all cumulative. So we've got to work on giving children a wealth of words. This is absolutely vital. Now, um, I, I don't want to get into politics. You know, that's Mr. C's department. But um, I just think this is so wonderful. What um, this is, uh, Ronald, uh, President uh, Ronald Reagan's speechwriter, uh, Peggy Noonan. And just look what she says about words. It just, um, it, it, it just reminds us how important they are. Words, like children, have the power to make dance the dullest beanbag of a heart. They count. They more than count. They shape what happens. And that is really interesting, isn't it? That we explore um, actually um, words about words, poems about words, um, the power of words. Um, and that's probably where I want to start this evening. But before I get to some nitty gritty, because um, I know I have newbies all the time, uh, just getting started people and never found me before. And wow, uh, let's start right at the beginning. Now, the good thing about my beginning is it's the beginning, <laughs> the middle and the end. And there's something wonderfully supportive about it that actually when we write what props up our teaching what shapes their thinking and also sharpens how we work in teaching and learning exchanges because it serves as a, a schema and kind of categories of guidance and filing and sorting We've got at the heart of our writing work, the writing rainbow. Now it's organized in three tiers. And of course, all of these tiers are just as important in poetry. Do we want to work on the top tier, on the ideas of writing? The senses and feelings, actions, speech and inner thoughts? Well, maybe. Do we want to work on the middle tier? 
Uh, and when we talk about uh, the grammar of poetry, it's things like hyphenated words, rhythm, line breaks, capitalizations, things that are different, things that actually break grammar rules, as it were. Or do we want to work in the bottom tier? Now, the bottom tier, the techniques of writing, those poetry techniques. Oh, look, anybody think I've had a couple of glasses of Prosecco at that handwriting? Anyway, um, you know, these are crucial. Um, and probably in poetry, it's the fantastics and the techniques of writing that are going to be really dominant. You're going to find them in so many places. You can catch them, you can analyse them, you can read like a detective, you can sort them, you can file them. Um, let's just remind ourselves. So I'm going to remind you of these because these are so important in poetry. So we've got our little bumblebee there buzzing around. That is your onomatopoeia if you can say it. Uh, alliteration uh, might be same sound, but not always same spelling. It is same sound, Mrs. C, thank you. Uh, but, you know, it'd be fun photograph just as much. Rhyme, repetition for effect, and repetition can be in lots of different forms, the power of three, uh, a repeated refrain in poetry. Simile, that equal sign, metaphor, and we have that lovely symbol of the birds like umbrellas, the umbrellas are like birds, whatever way we read it, it stands for a metaphor. Pathetic fallacy, where we have that mirroring between how characters feel and something in the environment, puns and personification. So we're going to find lots of those techniques in poetry. And, and many poems are drenched in one or more of these. Mr. C, anybody else got COVID? Well, yeah, well Diane Medhurst has just said she, she has had it. She's going back to school in a couple of days. But I'm going back to Hayley Mason, only because she's the COVID queen today. And she said, and I don't know whether you'll know or not, although I'm sure the squad will if you mention it, uh, she says, can she have some Christmas poetry recommendations? And if I could jump you back to the Pied Corbett anthology, which has been around for about 20 years or so, that has got recommendations for Christmas poems as well. And it's well worth, if you can get your hands on a copy, it's a really good book. I think, I think Pi has written so many anthologies now. It's a bit like... It's called a, One uh, Day what's Teacher... It? Oh, fine, I'll Google it. What's the, um, yeah, what's that, um, you know, when we were growing up? You know, not Jive Bunny, but Hits Number Collection what? 11. Have I Got Music For You? It what? weren't called Have I Got Music For You. you. What's what it you, called? What are you on about? Like those collections. Collections of what? Music on a CD. Have I Got Music For You? Have, have I Got Music? No. Now that's what I call music. Now that's what I call. What did I call it? Have I got news for you? Have I got music for you? <laughs> He's an idiot, isn't he? Have I got hello? It's like the way he says it. He delivers it like in a real like. Oh, I know the answer to this one. Uh, what? <laughs> Have I got music for you? Volume no, eleven. No. We've also got Catherine who's stroking your face on the screen. Oh, like that is a little bit weird. You can't pretend she was cleaning the screen, but... Oh, I love that. I love that. You can, you can just shine me up, baby. Right, so, um, yes, that is true. Um, many of the anthologies do have a little slither of, of, of Christmas gorgeousness, um, but let's just ask everybody else. I'm going to have a little rootle as well. So I might not know this off the top of my head, but I am going to have a little rootle. We might just uh, start posting into the squad some really good uh, Christmas poems. However, what I'm going to say, I've got an idea for Christmas. So hold that thought. Um, okay. Oh, Mr. C, I've done that thing that you absolutely hate when I speak I, I, can you can you see that on screen? Yeah. Okay. So uh, you've heard me mention, and some of you already do this, and it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's the works by Paul Corbin. The works. Cool. Yeah. Have I got music for you? Hashtag the works. Um, so pockets of poetry. So what we want to do is um, all in little gorgeous little kind of sacks of surprise we want to have snippets and lines and little chunks and rhythms and um you know 
anything we just think, wow, that's gorgeous, um, and we want to record it, and we want to hoard it, and we want to reward it. You know, kids who have found moments, and in fact, why not have a wintry Christmas pocket pouch of poetry in our little run-up for this season so we can make it linked to our curriculum you know there were you know when you're doing your curriculum topics called under the canopy on the rainforest there will be rainforest poems and and poetry is a gorgeous way that we can be truly cross curricular uh, and begin to make links beyond the knowledge within the subjects we're learning but yeah little pockets of powerful stuff um so this sort of thing you know and it might be the odd word or the odd phrase um hope it's the thing with feathers emily dickinson oh i'm going to use this little thing courage is the muscle we use when we speak selena godden uh each morning oh this is a sad one uh, each morning i stitch a scowl over my smile Fatima Asgar, just some gorgeous little chunks um, because these are the chunks uh, that we want to have embedded in their long-term memory so they can manipulate them and change them and of course the more words they have the more they will have at their disposal to use. Okay, um, bright bursts of colour, can I show that Mr C? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, show it. Can you see that? I've got it on here as well. Uh, uh, yeah, can you bring it up a little bit? Yeah. Any good? Uh, white bursts of colour. You've got the white version, the green version's on there. Yeah. So, Bright Bursts of Colour by Matt Goodfellow. This is a gorgeous little anthology. I'm sorry, Hayley, it hasn't got any Christmas uh, sprinkly stuff in, but it has got what I call those damn good kind of wireframe scaffolds that children can climb up and build their own. So there's some really good patterns within this collection. Um, and I just want to share one of Matt's poems here, kind of on the theme of loving words. I'm gonna read it to you. Just words. I'm gonna just put my glasses on. I think I'm better at seeing than I really am, so bear with. I tasted a word, fiery, hot, loosened a word from a fisherman's knot, fattened a word on saucers of cream, quarried a word, got rich on its seam, planted a word deep in the soil, anointed a word with ashes and oil, harnessed a word, exploited its power, banished a word to an ivory tower, polished a word, wore it pinned to my chest, finished a word with a rattling breath. Now, this sort of list-like rhythm, brilliant, this kind of concept of um, how we interact with words, but I want you to notice down the side here, this other idea of getting children to see the shape of poems. So here we've got this square that represents a verse or a stanza. We've got the rhyme structure, hot rhymes with not, cream rhymes with seam, hot and not, cream and seam. This is all very positive, hot and fiery and creamy, never quote me out of context. And then down here, this is positive, this is positive, but we start to get some glimmers of some negativity in here. It starts to change and shift. Now, if I wanted children to use this truly like a wireframe, where would I start? Well. A good place to start is in the patterns, drawing out other action verbs that would enable the reader and them as the writer to interact with language. So words like painted a word, chiselled a word, moulded, launched, stamped, etched, strangled, licked, sprinkled, floated. There's a mixture there of positive and negative. And this zone of relevance meant uh, 
well meant because I've taught it, but also means down the line, we can begin to say, well, which ones do we like? They're all relevant. We can make them all relevant. Which ones do we like best? Um, crept forward <laughs> to sneak the Prosecco. So, um, yeah, you can see it on screen. Okay, babes. You you do you. Oh, What's happened? You see, he's walked away from the technical hot desk. No, it's your screen. Oh, the screen's gone wonky. Oh, hold on. It's gone a bit wobbly. Oh, can you see me? Okay. We. Do you know what we have? But you keep talking. We have I don't been know if having you're... some technical glitches of late, and we don't know why. And um. We came down and we dusted and we cleaned and we turned everything on and off again. And actually, we've not, we're all having a few little gremlins, aren't we, Mr. C? What's well, happening okay. tonight? We're back, on the, back in the game? Stop. I'm going to keep going. Right, okay, keep going. Can people see this? Right, we think, well... Okay. Okay, how's that? I'm going to uh, keep going. Right. Can, can people see? Can ask people if they can see. Can you see? Has everything stabilised? Have we got a wonky bit of uh, tech going on? Or are we good? If we're good, thumbs up. If it's a bit dodgy, let us know. Yeah, we had a bit of a glitch, but it looks like it's back to normal. Do you know why we've had a glitch? Because he keeps getting out of his chair. Why didn't chair. you tell people what you did the other night? It's a little bit of a... It's a bit... It's well, not. last week... I left the studio with a very trendy, like, honest to goodness, like, oversized bag. It was, like, really, you know, probably very last year, don't care, really big, gorgeous. And as I walked out, I knocked the light. It was a bit like, you know, for want of a horse, the kingdom was lost. Uh, I literally knocked a light that knocked a camera, that knocked a microphone, that knocked a £642 screen, I keep getting told, and there was a bit of a... And broke it. And broke it. It was a domino effect. It was a catastrophe. Um, and um, these things happen, don't they? And, and actually, since then, it's all gone a bit... Wonky. Right, so I'm just going to gloss over that uh, because I think every, everybody involved in that evening, including Mr C, we, we shared the blame because if he hadn't have been trying to make, a, you know, have a point with me about something, then I wouldn't have hit my bag on the light. And so it goes. Anyway, we're not going to use this yeah, that, as a chance for marital <laughs> counselling. In a completely different office at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. We have got now. Wow. I hope I haven't lost you. We've just read that gorgeous poem from Matt, and we've collected action words. And what children need help with, because once we introduce rhyme, um, it can all go awry. But let's help them. Let's not leave too many things to chance. When we're working with rhyme, we've got to always talk about, uh, do you think it's got mileage? Do you think you'll be able to use it? And I'm a massive fan of rhyme banks. So that, and not even just giving them you know, two options. That can have quite a lot of options because once they have rhyme banks, they can begin to say, you know, what rhymes with sky, my, why, lie, deny, try, goodbye. You know, and all of these could have mileage in our poem, but steak and kidney pie, no, we just don't feel like that is going to... We, you know, if we put steak and kidney pie in there, it might ruin it. So it's those judgments at that sort of rhyme collection stage um, and that we just reject, like, steak and kidney pie, you're over. You know, it's, it's not going to work within the effect we're trying to create. So here, you can see that um, there's this sort of gathering well you know what you could lick this word and you know what would be the sensation or the taste you could paint what could you paint what colors could you paint what could you sprinkle confetti dust powder flour you know and this is this 
backbone of working that can uh, work on thinking side with children, the effort there, so they've got options and choices down the line. So, with, with the combination of thinking through verbs, then a rhyme bank that's got mileage, you could build something like this. Just words. I licked a word, icy, bitter, painted a word in gold and glitter, sprinkled a word with pastel confetti, drained a word from a pan of spaghetti, chiseled a word from the trunk of a tree, unlocked a word with the chest key, etched a word out of your scars, launched a word up to the stars, stamped a word with my angry feet, thought a word I couldn't speak. And it is that modelling, that scaffolding, that weaving the words around this wire frame uh, is the art of poetry teaching. And um, that scaffolding, uh, helping children see patterns and shapes, is the way that we can really uh, train them to be truly powerful poets themselves. Now, just so you get, you know, with something, uh, again, a little bit list-like, and list like poems. This is one uh, without rhyme. Uh, this is also very rhythmic and easy to mimic. There's the repeated word of little. Uh, we've, it almost has a lot of echoing like the wasp and this is by Rebecca Perry. Let me read you this. Um, little lion, little nibbler, little face dunker, little duck, little clinging cashew nut, little rummager, Sifting for gold, little hovercraft, little clamberer, little engine, little warrior, little armoured, little snail slime wings, little nuzzler, nuzzling a neck, little alien, little feeler, little zebra, little dinosaur legs, little sycophant, little mounter, little vampire, little pollen sucking bead, little pocket knife. Now, Actually, there's so much in there um, that I think you'd have to make a judgment whether you'd want children to have that amount. But the good thing about that shape is that could be applied to any other animal in the animal kingdom. Um, and instead of little, we could have big and apply it across, you know, elephants, bears, whales or giraffes, you know, whatever you fancied. Or, you know, if they're much younger, you know, taking, you know, the idea of like a mini beast topic, like caterpillars or spiders, ants or flies, we can mimic it across. Caterpillar. Little snake, little wriggler, little leaf nibbler, little plunge, little slimy, hairy sponge, little chomper hiding from prey, little bit hungry, little fuzzy, little green dancer, little green prancer, little lawn mower, little seed sower, little sleeping bag snuzzler, little drama, little explosion. Now children will have a lot of fun with that and I think we can all see as teachers whether it's an animal topic or actually any other topic linked to geography, you know, if you're thinking earthquakes or vol volcanoes or natural disasters, you know, there's, this is a really good place to hoard words and get them to really think about how they can build their own. Um, this is a little bit of a, a different way in and uh, I call this the long and short of it. Uh, where we want children to see uh, the pattern in a poem going almost from a long line to two little short chunks. And um, this can really work for a class collaborative piece where, you know, you could have, uh, you know, it all goes in the mix, it all goes in the pot and, you know, 
uh, different, it, it almost can run like a, uh, a bit like a narrative poem where you have a winter walk, let's say, and a scene. So you almost then would think about it like narrative. So we're walking through the park, we then walk by the pond, then we go up to the main street, then, you know, so you take them to different places on this winter walk and, and children then work uh, on one section doing a long line and two short bits. And Hayley, who might have COVID, but is really worrying about Christmas poems, um, that model can work to things like Christmas morning or their birthday or playtime or even to something like, you know, volcanoes. This is the sort of thing I mean. Uh, this is called um, Rainy Evening and um, I've just pulled this together but that idea of getting children to see long, short, short, long, short, short. Holding Dad's hand under the downpour Dark puddles, heavy skies, squinting through the darkness, cold neck, seeping socks. Seeing his shadow reflected on pavements, dripping trees, wind bracing, knowing his hand will never let go. Dreary night, clouds looming. My dad is a storm shielder, thunder booming, love like lightning. And children will really love the freedom of that um, and that sort of idea that we could then teach it almost like these are different plot points there's no pressure to rhyme long short short long short short and of course they can apply that to so many different situations in their experience and in the curriculum are you all right, Mr. C? Yes. All sure. Good. All yeah. good. Yeah, all good. Everyone's better. They're jumping the gun, you see, because they're talking about the Christmas star unit, but you're going to be talking about that, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about it for long, but I will mention something. But we are that... doing a video on it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk you know. about that, promise. So, I just want to now um, zoom into um, that sort of really firm way of teaching poetry so you're really certain and they are really supported by it and um, in the unit plans what we do for poetry is the same as non-fiction and what it starts with is two lessons but you can make a teacher professional judgment around that because it might not actually be two lessons in your room if you're in year five um, and you might think they've got it at the end of one lesson, but you take one or two lessons to help children look at a model, a damn good model, and draw down the shape of it. And then once you've got the shape under your belt, you slide in between experience lessons and taught kind of sentence stacking lessons. Now, of course, in poetry, they're lines from poems, you know, they're not sentences. So there'll, there'll, be, there'll be chunks of teaching that are building the lines in the poems. So this is one of the units on the unit plan website. And this, I'm gonna read you this, this is by Valerie Bloom. And this is what I mean by drawing out the shape from a poem, the river. The river's a wanderer, a nomad, a tramp. He doesn't choose one place to set up his camp. The river's a winder through valley and hill. He twists and he turns, he just cannot be still. The river's a hoarder and he buries down deep those little treasures that he wants to keep. The river's a baby, he gurgles and hums and sounds like he's happily sucking his thumbs. The river's a singer, as he dances along, the countryside echoes the notes of his song. The river's a monster, hungry and vexed. He's gobbled up trees and he'll swallow you next. Now that is used as the model. That's read, you read it, they read it, we perform it, we love it, we enjoy it. And then, not discovery learning on their part, we, very 
in a very kind of technical way, tell them the shape of the river. Now, you get this in the unit plans, but what you'll want to show them, first of all, is that this is chunked into verses. You know, this has got one, two, three, four, five, six verses, and that represents a verse. We also want to show them the rhyme scheme, A, B, C, B, and the second and the fourth line rhyme, hill and still, a long and song. But more than that, then this is the really powerful thing that you want them to mimic. Down here, you can see there's the key that is showing them that this is all about movement. This is all about thinking about arts and crafts and uh, this is how the river hoards things. This is showing the river as a, a kind of a family member. And this is crucial because this is what we want them to mimic. Now you might think, um, I'm going to get, I'm going to get them to lesson one, have that information from me, but lesson two, they're going to have the poem cut up, they're going to piece it back together, and in the piecing it back together, they're going to say all of that verse is about movement, and that's the shape of that verse. So they get a sense of how to rebuild it. Now, there's that clarity about the shape, and what they then need on their working wall is this sense that they know that they're going to be taught and every, how it's chunked on your working wall is how many lessons they are going to have to build this. So there's going to be six lessons and this poem will be built over a series of six lessons on crafting up the writing. Now, there will be moments in here where there are experience days and this represents the title of the poem. Now, all of our work now, when it's a lesson, building the writing, is not, you know, you might look at that verse and think, it's not much there. You know, is that really going to take a lesson? It's not about the outcome of the small verse with a small amount of lines. It's, it's more about the word hoard, the wealth of words, the thinking, the grafting, the choosing, the getting it right, you know, is it doing the very job we need it to? And that all the effort is on gathering and sorting and sifting. And that is really crucial. And we want to train children's thinking in that way too. It's not about the writing outcomes. It's about the journey. It's, it's almost like the journey of the river and, and all the things that the river hoards. You know, that's, I want you to love the wonder of words. I want you to be a word gatherer. And actually we're gonna invest there on the thinking side. Uh, and we're gonna wallow in all that language because that down the line will make us a better writer, not just in this instance for this little short verse, but for the long haul, for all of our writing, for things you reject but will become precious and better, you know, in other writing places. Um, and that's where we're going to put our efforts. So, for example, here, when we want to make kind of a movement metaphor, we've got to think about things that are constantly moving to compare the river to, you know, an ambler, a traveller, the hands on a clock, the sand in an hourglass, a migrating bird, a bustling city. You know, we've, it's not about the one they choose, it's about all the options. Um, and once you've got your noun on the go, oh, I've had a bit of, oh, let me see if I can repair that, Mrs C. Um, in fact, I've lost some of my favourite words there, flowing, gushing. Uh, but yeah, we need all of these action words for rivers like meandering, tumbling, winding, zigzagging, stitching, twisting, curving. And that's where the effort needs to be. And once you've got, uh, you know, a, a comparison, uh, well, it's more than a comparison because we're going to 
boof it up to a metaphor and these action words, then children are going to be well placed. Um, let's just take another verse, for example, when we're looking at uh, the performing arts, you know, comparing the river to, uh, you know, somebody who's a performer. So is it a choir or, or a, a, a symphony or a lullaby? You know, that sort of idea. Is it kind of an instrument being played? Is it a flute? Um, and then what are you going to choose? And giving them so many choices. And then within that, you know, words like frolics and flicks and jumps and waltzes and flickers and steps, cavorts, and we've got more of the, the dancing verbs here, flits and turns. And that's really crucial with poetry. Um, it's not their short, pithy moment of choice. It's the, the journey followed. And so what I often see in uh, schools that teach poetry well is actually on their thinking side, there's so much, and actually probably not too much on their writing side when they've made that final choice. Um, this now is leaning on Valerie Bloom's poem that you'll write over time, over those six lessons when you're teaching writing. So for example, the river's a dancer as he steps and he flows, ebbing in harmonies, a tune, an echo. The river's a lotus, a delicate bloom, its soft silver touch refreshing and cool. I mean, near rhyme, Mrs. C, you know, could do better. Um, I've nearly finished about poetry, but what I want to say is a few things, and this isn't actually just about poetry. Um, I know independent writing is tough, but I also want to tell you that in every single unit plan, there's a really helpful teaching sequence for independent writing. And I do want to remind you, I'm just going to read these words uh, from teacher assessment guidance. Um, remember as well, prior to independent writing, whether that's non-fiction, story or poem, we are allowed to give them a shared experience. Can you hear that? We are allowed to. Um, show them something that will enrich their knowledge or um, live something together or watch a film or listen to some music or go on a walk. Um, and that shared experience can be memorable and stimulate them and build their imagination if it's story or give them more knowledge if it's non-fiction or give them some options you know, different contexts, different places. I'm going to read exactly what it says from the STA, that these writing outcomes can emerge from a text, a topic, a visit, a curriculum experience, which pupils have had opportunities to discuss and re rehearse what they want to write about. You know, that's really important because I think sometimes, you know, we... We want them to, we want to give them options. We don't want to say, this is your only idea. It has to be their idea. But we can have a shared, lived experience with them. And I really do recommend that. And if you're ever feeling like, oh, I don't know what to do, read that. Read that sequence. I'll put it on a sheet of A4, so it's not going to tip us over the edge. It's in, the unit, all, the it's, it's in all the unit plans. Have a read of it. And I know you're still going to text me and say, what shall I do? Really, it's what the kids want to do. But read that because that's that lovely sequence of the things we can do uh, in an open-ended way to elicit and stimulate them so they've got some options and choices. Now, um, we're working behind the scenes as well, just so you know. We haven't quite got a launch date for this, but we are working hard to come up with a whole bank of independent writing ideas. And we're going to upload those on the Unit Plan website. But just to give you a gist, if I was doing the river, uh, then what I would do is take that structure and then 
encourage them to do something like the water cycle as a poem, you know, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and these would make the six verses of the poem. Precipitation could have metaphors linked to tears or sadness or elderly people or a heavy load. Or you could take any of the science topics like planets or animals or the human body and each of the verses could be a different component to make some metaphorical links. I'm also letting you know we are uploading four new poetry units and they're going to be up on the site next week. Um, so, what years are they, Jane? Oh, what years are they? Years, schmears. Some year. Years, schmears. Who knows, babe? I can't remember. Um, but, do you know what? I often think with the poetry units, just crack them open. I mean, I know people are going to bagsy them, but... Bagsy, show me age there. Um, but there's a lovely one coming on board next week called If I Was In Charge. Uh, and the kids will love that. You know, if they were in charge of the school, what would be on the menu? If they were in charge of the school, what flavour soap would there be in the toilet? If they were in charge of the school, um, you know, what would they have as their lessons? So that's, you know, and I genuinely am singing with excitement about those extra, because any bit of poetry that comes on board, you know, where we, you know, we talk about the arts, poetry is in that family, and we've got to really uh, love poems, embrace poems as part of our art curriculum beyond English. Yes, Mr. C, I'm, I'm pontificating. Most people on here will have probably already subscribed to the unit plans, but can you just explain to people yeah, yeah. what they get, where they get it from, and all that stuff? Okay, so you go to janeconstein.com. There's um, about five different sections. You click on the unit plan bit. If you haven't downloaded the free stuff, download them, have a go. Um, if you are in the, uh, I mean, it costs $24.99 for an individual to use it for a whole year. And there's new ones coming on board all the time. Those four poetry ones getting uploaded soon. And uh, it's a kind of, they're there to adapt, but it's kind of a save our Sunday approach. And more than that, once you're in the club, the unit plan family, you can hit up your mates and go, what have you done? And they're like, what have you done? Well, I've got some plot points, boom. Well, I've got some extra word banks, boom. I've got some photos. And it's like, it's, it's a bit like, Pokemon for grown-ups. There's all this like sharing and, and, and uploading and looking after each other and swapping and it's wicked and um, it's worth getting involved because it, we've worked hard, genuinely worked hard to think about the whole curriculum, think about uh, you know good quality non-fiction books. We look at uh, you know winners, Smarty Prize winners, you know the the books that are winning awards uh, and are forward thinking and, um, and and it just means that we, we can have bigger conversations about teaching and learning. You know, because we all, we all want to get better, but we don't want to get exhausted. You know what I mean? Some of us want to get drunk and that's okay because it's Sunday. <coughs> We're allowed to do that. I don't find your coughing very helpful in the Sorry. background, Mr C. Uh, if he's caught COVID off that chat, I'll tell you. Right, um, just to say, oh, I hope you can see that. I've gone a bit writing too big. Right. Tomorrow. Go up a little bit, just a tiny bit. Okay, basically, this is, this is like, it's, some things in life are better not having a lot of notice. Because if you have too much notice, it's too soon. This is just about, oh, that's sudden, but we can go with it. So basically, next Friday, we are going to start a Christmas sprinkly, all the sparkle unit. But next Friday, which is the 27th, is an experience day. So it's like we're going to start it like Royal We start it like you're going to start it. So, on Friday, 
you are going to kick off the gorgeous unit that you can find in the unit plan site. It is tied to year two, but you know I'm going to push them. The year twos can access it. You can make it easier because we're team teaching and we're together and we're a squad and we look after each other. And actually, it's perfect for a whole school project. So like everyone can get involved. Now, tomorrow night, just sliding that in there, I don't know how logical I'm being, but tomorrow night at 7.30, I don't want you to panic if you can't be there, I am going to explain that unit in detail. How it's going to roll, who does what, we've had some new people in the squad saying what do I do, what help, so tomorrow I'm going to explain it step by step slowly. Now, if you can't be there live at 7.30, don't worry, because we're going to leave it on YouTube and you can watch it whenever you want. And that is going to be, what are you doing? What am I doing? What are the kids doing? What do the books look like? How's it going to roll? Yeah? Now, we start on Friday. And I'm just tipping you off here. Friday's first experience day only needs your gorgeous voices because you are going to kick the unit off by finding the theme tune, the theme tune to this BBC advert, singing the theme tune, karaoke in the theme tune, loving the theme tune, boom. And the song you have to get ready with is Clean Bandit Symphony. So Friday is Sing, learn, love the song, read it like poetry, then play it, then sing it. And then when you've looked at that poem, leech from it any words in there that are about music and add a few more. That's Friday. I know you love Clean Bandit. I love Clean Bandit. I want to see those videos. Like I want to. What did I have to sing? Yeah, can't sing now with COVID-19. Can't you Don't sing? Have to talk it. Shut it. No. You can sing, no. can't you? No. Can't you sing? No. Can't you COVID sing? You are joking. You can sing, can't you? No. Can't no. you sing on the playground in the fresh air? You're banging out too much breath. <laughs> you're, banging out, you're banging out too much breath. So we can this listen in, to it. This in six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Wow, I didn't know Sims was off the charts. Okay, you have to. A new experience there, then. All right, Mrs. Seal, sing it. Mrs. Seal, sing it behind. I'm so good at singing. Uh, but essentially, Friday then will be a poetry read of Clean Bandit. We can watch. We can watch Clean Bandit in concert, can't we? We can listen to it and we can draw down the musical words. I love how we can adapt on the hoof. So um, tomorrow, I like you'll be sick of me by then, but tomorrow I'm going to explain it slowly because I want us all to get involved because we can all just tingle together when we do that unit. It's just so absolutely heart burst. It is gorge. So, um, that is tomorrow night at 7.30. Watch when you want and when you're ready. Now, I'm just going to finish on one of my favourite teachers out there, Mr O'Brien, who had to get expelled from the boys' club that he started in the chat with Ian. I don't know if you're on tonight, Mr O'Brien, but I did notice your gorgeous poetry work. Um, and, and for me... This is exemplifies exactly what I mean. We got thinking side. Oops, let me write that there. We've got thinking side here. We've got writing side here. But look at all the language. Look at all the choices before we make our choices. Um, oh, well, as if by magic. I honestly didn't mean to turn that off there but that's almost like the text saying we've had enough of you and i don't blame you we're going to call it a can night you, there also yes can you before you go can yes you remind people that you are back next sunday as well yes so it's like it's like a, a gorgeous 
sandwich. I'm gonna... You've had me today as a slice of bread. I'm on tomorrow at 7.30, sprinkling round my Christmas star and explaining it. But I'm also going to be here next week um, when I'm going to be zooming into very clearly and closely reading. I want to do a little bit more about reading, the teaching of reading. Uh, and of course, if you're here and in the squad, you can ask me any questions about my Christmas star. Mr. C, any other things? If yeah, not, can you put your... Next Sunday? Can you put your thing on? Your, your thing on? Yeah, oh, I'm actually going to do it a bit. Yeah. Because I don't think that you... Yeah, well, the thing just died. All right, I'm finding it really difficult to do the tech... So I've got a broken screen, so I can't actually see. I'm going to quickly show everybody this, Jay, and how you destroyed the screen and broke it. So it's very difficult for me to do my bits. Anyway, so what Jane hasn't really, see it's all broken there. What Jane hasn't really explained is the, so she's going to be teaching the unit over, up until the 18th. Um, so if you haven't seen the post on Facebook or got the emails or anything, do have a look at it. It's, um, it basically, Jane is going to be delivering her live teaching in the classrooms. Last uh, unit she did was Feast. We weren't going to do another unit till next term, but as we often do, we made these decisions when we've had a couple of glasses of wine. And so it was a last minute thing and she's going to be teaching live into the classrooms over the last couple of weeks of term. Some schools are finishing a bit earlier, but we're trying to get it so that you'll be finishing your independent work on the Friday. I know it's not the best time of the year to be doing it, but you know, there's no nativities or anything going on, is it? It's a good way to fill your time. There's only so many films you can watch. Um, so, but she's gonna go into detail about that tomorrow night. There was something else I forgot now because I was rabbiting on about my screen that you broke, 612 pound, not 42. And I'm gonna put you back to Jane. I think she's got something quickly to show you before we go off. I, I'm not going to keep you long because we can get too excited, but I did also want to say um, those of you who have got the unit plans and you're having to build maps on your wall, um, this gorgeous resource that I talked about last week, um, the non-fiction shapes, they also include poetry shapes. So this is a powerful way, things like stand of, stanza and verse and repeated refrain and rhyming structure, things that can really help us as a teacher. We can print them off, you can put them on working walls, you can put them on your interactive whiteboards and it means you've got that because you, as you lift them, uh, they've got uh, transparent backgrounds, you can kind of move them around and uh, build your own maps in the classroom. So um, make sure you get your mitts on that as well. Uh, you know, Black Friday is kicking off, Mr. C, isn't it? When's that? There is. Put your thing right. back on. Okay. C. There is something going on with Black Friday, but I don't know what it is. So we don't deal with the business side of things. We just here talk rubbish drinking. But uh, the Black Friday, I think there's Black Friday things going on from tomorrow. I think. Woo. It might be the day after. So there's some there are offers that you'll be getting every day. So just keep an eye open for that. But don't forget, if you're a member of the Teacher Squad Facebook group, the I think that's the best discount that you can get anyway. So if you're not a member of the Teacher, so it's Kai Rome's group, it's called Teacher Squad, we go to Facebook, join that and then somebody will tell you, there is a discount that we have that's a code for the members. I can't remember what it is. Don't, don't tell on it, don't anybody tell it in the chat. Let people go and join the group. It's not our group. It's brilliant. If you're not joining it anyway, don't join it just because of the discount because the people are brilliant at sharing all that stuff and all that loving stuff, especially for Christmas. Okay, so what you're going to give us, people, is a whole range of Christmas sprinkly poems. What I've given you, I hope, is this sense of how we work with story, how we work with non-fiction. We apply that pattern finding shape searching thinking to poetry as well and um i will share like you 
all these poems that have got these really good scaffolds. We've got those four units coming on board, so do make sure you download them. And actually, you know, you might need to have a chat about sharing them out. And don't be afraid to use some of these same models, but in different ways. You know, uh, year five can write a volcano poem from that structure, but year two can write my Christmas morning from that structure. Okay, folks, I am going to, as they say, well, as my mother used to say, my mother's still around, why am I saying that? What she used to, she still bloody does. I'm going to love and leave you, and I'll see you all, well, I'll see you tomorrow if you can be asked.